Question 3. In one of your videos, you conclude that thinking requires language. How does this square with the wolf sapir controversy concerning the possibility of nonverbal thought? And what about the capacity of animals to think? For example, when a cat is considering its responses to an unfamiliar object in the household. So, um, for those who don't know about the wolf sapir controversy or the, the Wolfian hypothesis, it's, uh, this is a, um, a, a hypothesis articulated rather vaguely by the um, two um, linguists uh, concerned, um, that thought is structured by language. That um, if you think in German, you're going to think in a different way than if you think in Italian to, to, to slightly parody the situation. That is to say, because the words um, embody the concepts and because words in different languages differ, uh, there are words in German that do not exist um, in Italian and vice versa. You are you're, you're limited to certain kinds of thought, and then the same applies to the grammatical structure of those languages. So the Wolfian hypothesis is that the kinds of thoughts that you're capable of having um, are determined by the language that you think in. Uh, and then an extreme version of that alluded to by the questioner uh, is that if you have no language, then you know, can you have any thought? So um, the, when this um, question says, in one of your videos, you conclude that thinking requires language, I have to say I don't conclude that. Um, and I think that the misunderstanding must arise from the fact that there is one type of thinking that requires language. And uh, it must have appeared when I said that, that I was talking about thinking altogether. I hope it's clear from my answers to the first and second questions this week um, what I mean by thinking. It's not, it's not one thing. Um, underneath thinking is this affective volitional urge, um, the intentionality uh, in the raw. And then there's thinking with representations, which is a certain kind of thinking. And then there's thinking about oneself thinking with representations, which is another kind of thinking. That latter kind that a um, uh, uh, third person type of thinking, uh, thinking based upon the capacity to reflect upon oneself as an object like other objects in the world, uh, that kind of thinking doesn't require language, but it is certainly greatly facilitated by language. Um, they, uh, what it requires is some symbolic code, some second order re-representational system, um, what Pavlov called the second signaling system. Uh, in, in us humans, uh, language is, for the most part, um, the, the coding system that we use. But we also use musical notational systems, mathematical notational systems. It's not limited to language. Uh, any form of abstract thought which removes you from the concrete feeling with a representation uh, serves the same purpose. So, um, to be clear, this part of my answer, I'm saying, first of all, I don't believe that all thinking requires language, but I do think I do believe that one type of thinking is greatly facilitated by language, that is abstract thinking, uh, thinking uh, from the third person point of view. So um, that in turn means that the more concrete type of thinking, thinking with a representation rather than thinking about representations, um, that type of thinking, clearly the Wolfian hypothesis doesn't apply to that. Um, let alone the more rudimentary, sort of like pre-reflective, it's not even thinking, but pre-reflective, um, um, affectively driven action. Um, the, clearly their language doesn't come into question at all. Um, but it does give structure to our mental life. The, the structure of the different instinctual affective systems that I've talked to you about clearly gives structure to the possibilities of mentation um, at a pre-linguistic level. Then this uh, concrete thinking, pre-verbal thinking, uh, also structures our thinking, uh, but not uh, like a language. Um, and then there's this higher order aspect, which I've already said enough about to, I hope, have made my point clear. Uh, for those of you who are interested in Freud, these two types of thinking, the thinking about and thinking with um, representations, is what Freud called word presentations and thing presentations, thinking with things is a very concrete type of thinking. And um, uh, uh, in Freud's uh, so-called system unconscious, this type of thinking predominates. Uh, then consciousness in Freud, which is a, which, by which Freud means secondary consciousness, this reflective consciousness, that requires words or something like words. 
So to come back to the matter about the Wolfian hypothesis, clearly the Wolfian hypothesis applies only to the last of these three levels um, of mentation that we're talking about. And um, uh, so I, I, I don't agree with the Wolfian hypothesis. I do, though, think uh, in the limited aspect of our cognition uh, where language predominates, there is a differentiation to what sorts of abstract thoughts you can have. The sorts of abstract thoughts you can have is clearly going to be highly correlated with the sort of abstract concepts that you can have, and languages do place um, relative constraints on those. But I wouldn't overstate it. As regards that little kitty cat contemplating, what did it say? Um, uh, the, 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 the cat um, considering its responses to an unfamiliar object in the household, I'm all for that. Of course they can do it.